Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video. In this video I'll be going through uh, the Western Bulldogs first Carlton, I believe it's round 6 game, um, in which Carlton actually came up victorious and this started my climb up in the AFLW tipping actually to a point now where I'm 27th even with two wrong picks this round just because the two wrong picks were so highly, I mean it was 10% each. Um, even the Brisbane lost to Collingwood might even be um, about a, I think an 8% went with Collingwood, so not many people, no one actually jumped me in that game, I stayed put in my position, I don't think anyone in the top 27 actually moved up, um, and yeah, I'm really actually in a, a, a decent position yet again, I, it seems like I'm in the same position as I always am in, um, I just need to keep on, I just need to gain a pick somewhere. Um, so hopefully we can um, continue on with that. But anyway, might as well get into the video. So before we do, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I upload, and let's get into the video. So as you can see here, uh, Western Bulldogs 34, Carlton 53. I forgot what I had. I think I tipped Carlton by 10, so yeah, a pretty good tip there. Uh, Western Bulldogs kicking a goal, basically on full-time, helping out my margin a little bit and getting me back... Um, well, now up to 27, and if I had, um, if they hadn't kicked that goal, I wouldn't be surprised if I dropped to 29 or 30th overall, so it probably helped a little bit, that goal. Blackburn, um, 115, she was absolutely huge, and if we look at the fantasy by sc uh, scores by quarter, and I will admit now, after the round that I've had, I kind of just have put uh, fantasy to a side, as you can see here, the overall rank at the moment is... Um, 1,021, I still have Jazzy Gardner to play, so I could go up, but yeah, Wardlaw, Wakeford, both failed, and I sort of just laugh at this now, looking back on it, and just thinking of, the, of all the mistakes that I made, and I guess there are, I will come up with a list, um, that I'll probably post a video on as, um, we're coming up dry with videos in about, um, four or so weeks, so about a month time, we'll have about, from November to early December, um, we'll have a pretty dry month for me, um, where hopefully I'll just be able to make like draft uh, team previews, uh, draft stuff about the AFL, etc., like that, uh, for fancy, etc., as well as going through what happened in both the men's and women's game and figuring out where I went wrong, etc., um, probably doing predictions and stuff like that for the future, etc., as we sort of have a month or two where nothing's happening before the BBL starts to hit, uh, to kick into gear, I guess. But anyway, um, yeah, Blackburn went nuts. Um, if we look at Blackburn and you, my three picks here, you can see Wardlaw, um, Wakeford combined for 90. So I had 92 between my three on, uh, 162 between my three on field and Blackburn. Ah, uh, yeah. She was perfect for picking, to be honest with you. Um, and I should have just gone with her, but obviously there were some uh, reasons why I didn't. And if we look at the midfielders, we look at round points. You see Jesse Lambert as well, doing really well. Uh, Bates as well. There was literally, they're sitting there, there where I could have gone for her. Hatchard as well. I think I was priced out of that. Lucas Rod did well. Shira and uh, Skepper did really well. So they were combining those two. And then you have Lamb. And um, yeah, so that was another failed pick. And so... Um, I guess the cash turn has really actually stopped me in my tracks, I guess, and going for those um, going for those lesser known people has really just killed me off. But anyway, um, as we spoke about Lamb with 101 points, 83% time on ground, she was just all round good, especially in the middle two quarters where she got 61, as well as Blackburn got 61 as well. It was just that first quarter from Blackburn that set her apart from Lamb. George, uh, George Stathus, I think that's how you say it. Uh, she got off to a flyer, was on 83 at three-quarter time and didn't even get to the ton. So, I mean, that's sort of a failure. But, um, yeah, huge effort from her. As you see, Western Bulldogs dominate. Well, they actually didn't dominate the uh, um, the fancy points. I thought they would with 115, 101, 90, 97, 96. But you have a big drop-off here where a couple of the... Um, I guess a couple of the Carlton girls jump in here and you can see sort of the back end here. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm kind of confused here how that happened. I guess there was a lot of 40s here that sort of, if you look across the line, you're seeing about a plus two or three points across every single player um, here in terms of Carlton getting a couple points extra and that's where you get that 28-point uh, split in terms of Carlton having more fancy points. 
Um, and if we look here, just doing the standard view, just to look at the disposals, um, 159, 158 marks was very different. Um, I'm trying to figure out what, how did they, how did they get this, uh, this split here? If they had less marks, less tackles, 10 less tackles is 40, 10 less marks, is, uh, 14 less marks. How did they gain up so much, um, points wise? And if we look here at this free kick split here, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 11 free kicks, 4, 2, 4, 6, 7, 9, 11, 12. So I'm trying to figure out how did they get the, um, how did they get the points differential to get back on, to get back ahead, I'm guessing. One, um, well, I mean, they did score 20, uh, 19 more points um, through through that and then they also had 14 more hit outs so that's and then also what a plus um a, pl a plus a four differential i think it is in terms of uh free kick differential as well so that gets you up to around about what's that 35 or whatever but surely the it must be something with um the possessions that they had such a big advantage kicking wise or something like that that got them the split um if we look here, um, it's oh, that's that's really weird. Um, if you actually look at it, um, here we go. So the kicks actually was one fifty nine, one fifty eight. The disposals was two eighty nine to two five two. So that's what the the differential here is. That this number is actually the kicks. Um, free kicks was eleven twelve. Hitouts is correct. And then I just want to see what is the marks fifty seven to. Uh, 57 to 43 as we said and then the tackles would be right 65 to 55 so um, if you actually yeah just looking at the numbers here so the kicks were basically dead even but uh, Carlton had another 38 handballs and that's the difference there they had the 38 handballs which made up for the 10 for the 40 points made up in, uh, for the 40 point differential in tackles and the 42 point differential in marks so that uh, 40 handballs made up for uh, that 80 points there and then the uh, 29 or whatever 28 uh, lead on the uh, fancy points was the hit outs and the uh, the goals and the goal um, and behinds difference so anyway there was a lot that was what five minutes of me just trying to figure out something that really didn't need figuring out but I guess for future reference the disposal number is the kicks and not the uh, handballs or is the the disposal number is the kicks and not the kicks plus handballs. So uh, moving on here, no one else really mattered. Uh, was it did suck that uh, Barry got twelve more points than Wardlow. That kind of sucked. I thought uh, at least it wasn't a killer blow, but yeah, just another bad trade. Um, and yeah, just pretty much I got I got three trades that were just terrible. And there's that I should have gone for um, if I had gone Schultz and kept her. And then gone um, Everest up to someone like a, I don't even know, Everest to like a, well, Fitzgerald didn't do anything in this game. She got 40, which is all right. But um, yeah, just going to someone else would have been better, honestly. But uh, that's that. And um, so you got all the um, all the Western Bulldogs girls. And we move on to Carlton and Shearer, 27, 3 and 8. Skepper, 23, 7 and 5. Both of them going absolutely large. And if we look at the um, forwards, uh, round points, get rid of the mids, you can see Skepper did really well. So I should, if I'd gone Skepper um, and gone a 300k uh, midfielder or a 300k uh, utility player, that would have been really good, but I didn't. Um, Could have gone Barr as well. She did really well. Janka did uh, really well as well. Um, but yeah, just didn't go any of them. Goldsworthy as well went 90. So she was there as well. So yeah, I just missed out on literally every single good player here. At least Hoare didn't do well, so she should um, hold price will go down. But yeah, just didn't pick the right one, I guess. Um, anyway, Moody, 80, so she's an option next week for Wakefer. Um, Pound, 79, McKay, uh, McKay, Hill, Fitzpatrick, Goss, Vesio, Velado. Cordner, 45, so she her role has just gone to kaput once... Um, uh, once Gabby Pounds come back in. Um, Dalpos, 17 touches down back. 
no non-disposal points basically as you can see if I move up my camera a little bit there we go um, you can see here one mark and one free kick so four points so 40 points in disposals four from not that's not uh, a good split and then we go down here uh, Walker Vickers Fitzgerald as I was talking about a 351 or a 357 K defender who went uh, 51 and now 40 so she's gonna gain some cash Austin, McWilliams, Finn, Lolawifi, and Lawson um, Tavern. That's really weird. 15 points from 92% time on ground. Um, and yeah, that pretty much is the video. Not the most insightful as um, this is filmed on a Sunday and I kind of forgot about this. <laughs> what happened in this game as I just sort of switched off from um, the actual fantasy side of... Uh, the women's this week, as I knew from the, about the first game when Barry actually scored a 66 that this was going downhill, and um, I wasn't, I was away doing stuff on the Saturday, so didn't catch most of the games, and then I look at my phone at about 4.30, and I see a 36 for, I basically saw um, everyone except for the Swans girl, so I saw Roberts 98, happy about that, Wardlaw 54, I was like, not great, 12 point difference. Uh, wait for 36 and I just started laughing and I saw Parker 72 and I was just like yep that's about right um, Evans heads and those girls as well just didn't go didn't hit and I was just like yep this is just that round where you just can't get anything right but anyway that pretty much is the video I hope to have all nine reviews out by so it's Sunday Monday Tuesday and then Wednesday will have my round review, which will just be me being like, this was just a shock around. Um, then you'll have trade targets. And then Thursday, you'll have my um, some other videos, tips, and which is probably going to be my biggest video of the week at this point. Um, and then you'll have, obviously, the tips on Thursday, round preview on Friday, and hopefully some other videos if I can get time with my uni schedule. Um, to get some other videos out. But that is the video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys.